I'm Carrie Adams, and you're listening to Carrie's Connoisseurs, coming to you from Solid Gold Podcasts. Here we talk to the movers and shakers, the drinkers, the dreamers, and all the people who make it happen in the liquor and luxury industries from around the world. Today, I have got a very special surprise in my studio for you. It's Malcolm Gooding. Malcolm. Carrie. To be referred to as a special re- surprise is something <laughs> really different and special. You are a special surprise. You'll have to elaborate. I'll tell. We're going to tell everybody. By the time we're finished, everybody is going to know and or remember Malcolm Gooding because I can remember when I was a little girl growing up in, in South Africa, the voice of Malcolm Gooding on a Friday night. Squad cars. That's right. Say it. 7.30. Sponsored by General Motors, they prowl the empty streets at night in fast cars on foot, facing danger at every turn, expecting nothing less. These are the men of squad cars. There you go. Who doesn't? I've gone goose flesh nights. Who <laughs> does not remember that? I know many, many people who will. And before, I know it's quite hard for millennials and Gen Zs to imagine a world without buttons and screens and what have you. But we did not have television when we were growing up. That's absolutely true. So, so Malcolm was one of the people who contributed to this amazing theater of the mind, which was radio, which is why we still love radio today. And this podcasting is sort of modern day radio. It is. Really. I love podcasting. Um, but we, we were left to our imagination. And I can remember on a Friday night, we were brought up Catholics, bless our souls, and my mother ensured, she wasn't a Catholic, but, but my father was. And my mother nonetheless ensured this fish and chips on a Friday night. And we would have this delicious fried fish and chips, which didn't cost 700 rand a kilogram in those days. And we would eat it and we'd all rush to the sitting room around a transistor radio, if you can bear it, where we would turn it on. I think it was half past seven, was it? 7.30. Yes. 7.30 on a Friday night. And follow the squad cars. There was also Lux Radio Theatre. There was Inspector, Arthur... In, Inspector Carr Investigates. Inspector Carr. There was um, Arthur Blakesley with his Test the Team. Do you remember all that stuff? <laughs> Honestly. With, with a lot of his controversial findings that were essentially racist-based. <laughs> we, we don't go into that. Nobody but he had such an incredible about... brain. Oh, God, know. he was a clever yeah, man. Yeah. He really, really was a clever so he, man. That was almost a, a, a way of forgiving him. His findings, you know. I know. I know. Was he, you know, we won't even talk about that cranium size or anything yeah, yes, like that. My father oh, was very, that. my father was highly cerebral. But you see, it was scientifically proven. Oh, so yes, of course. And you couldn't it, challenge it. Yeah, and there was yeah. no mainstream media to poo poo it in those days either. He no was, challenging platforms. He was at the all. mainstream media. <laughs> yeah, he was indeed. Welcome. Arthur Blakesley. I promise you. I really, really, really thought that you were born next door to Sean Connery's house. But I was horrified to hear that you were born in Ferenichen. That's <laughs> absolutely true. to me. Yeah. What is that? Well, uh, I, I, my, mo- my mother was Welsh and my father was Scots. And I grew up in this, I'm going to say, multilingual <laughs> environment because you've got these two... You've ex- got Yochi ex- Diam ex- and exactly, you know, whatever. The, these two extreme cultures. And uh, for some reason, I, both of them loved words. My father had a beautiful singing voice. My mother didn't have a great singing voice, but she, she was enraptured by words. And from a young age, I, I developed to survive in Fiona, talking like everybody else did. Yes. And you know, I just like, I, I would, just fit it in. Sorry, it wasn't me, miss. <laughs> it wasn't me. Man. And then I'd come home and Rachel would say, how was school today? And I'd say, oh, mom, it was wonderful. You know? and, <laughs> And I, it was, we lived so that's in, where your it was personality fantasy. came from. Oh, and, and I live with it to this day. It's the legacy left by Rachel and Bill Gooding. You know? Well, it was brilliant. Rachel Evans I mean, and Bill Gooding. Oh, was she Evans? I yes, mean, yes, what yes, else yes. would she have been <laughs> exactly. as a Welsh person? Mm-hmm. I just remember my mother, she was a massive fan of Sean Connery. She thought if there was ever somebody she was going to cheat on, my father with it would have been Sean Connery. And she always used to say, Malcolm Gooding, he is. That kind of South African version of, of Sean Connery. And you do speak just like him if you want to. You're a brilliant mimic. When you're in a scrape with evil villains, you <laughs> can be smooth-faced and smelling of expensive aftershave. That's why I use new Silver Gillette 
double shave it keeps me shaven, <laughs> not furred. <laughs> You see, guys, it's just extraordinary. I'm not sure that there are many people left like you. It's a talent <laughs> that nobody... So, you were born in Ferenigen. Yes. Only child, brothers, sisters? No, I have two sisters. Okay. And, in fact, we had a little bit of a family reunion yesterday. It was quite nice. We're all getting so old now. I know. <laughs> but we, it we, happens. We talk about the past. And we, it was actually a lovely home to grow up in. With this, and this why Scots was it for Renachen? Was your father working? No, my working? father was a fitter and turner. Okay. He, he worked for a company called Stuart's and Lloyd's. I head remember office, Stuart and Head Lloyd. office in, uh, in Scotland. Sorry. Yeah. And, uh, and, and obviously, uh, he, was, he was a fitter and turner for more than 40 years and years. And he gave undying attention. Devotion. Yes, devotion. To, and he, loyalty. And he had I know wonderful hands. He was not ambitious in terms of acquiring any senior position. So he started as a tradesman, and he basically left work Dad as, as a, a tradesman. tradesman. Yeah. Yeah. And they were proud of it. We were speaking about it the other day, in fact, at my house, where we were saying it's such a terrible shame that we no longer have those polytechnics, or whatever they were called, technicons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they produced the most unbelievable artisanal um, standard in South Africa. I, I mean, I went to school with a girl whose father was a plumber and he was the richest dad in the school. Yes. He yes. did so well. And now the kids are having this ram down their throat. They have to go to university. They've got to get an undergrad. There's no more Technicon available for them. And Unfortunately, that's just not the way of the world. The, not the, everybody can be an undergrad. The Technicons died for the wrong reason. Yeah. There, there was an ideological association. The Technicons were seen as being uh, a creation of the nationalists or yeah. white supremacy. But or they whatever. weren't. I mean, they were all over the world. The standards. And just go, going back to my father, my father would wear an overall. He was quite a dandy when he, when he, <laughs> when he didn't dress in overalls. He, he, he dressed well. Was he, quite he, he loved tweeds. He loved well, tweeds. Of course he did. And he, had, he was a good-looking man, so that was an advantage. Uh, but he he had a lathe, and that lathe he took such pride in. Oh yeah. It, it sh the, all the shone. brass, all the brass knobs shone literally. Aww. And after his day's task, working that lathe, he would clean it, cleaned, it and, and he would boiled. clean it, and he would clean it. Yes, I'm and it, it was his pride and joy. Yeah, I know. It's just so and, special. And, and I, I suppose, as I promised myself, when we were in sort of in our teens and twenties, early twenties, that I would never be one of those people to say, you know, when I was young, mm -hmm. we did this and we did that. But it really is different, but you fall isn't into it? The trap. You it is in, different yeah, because it moves it. along so quickly. And I think in a world where excellence is measured in so many different ways to what it was then. I don't know what excellence is now anymore, is it? Is uh, it? So the service excellence and the levels of excellence seemingly are so different now. And I feel sorry for children who are not being taught about, um, what's the word? Being taught about the niceness of what's good and clean and fresh, tralala. Do you know what I mean? It's just that sort of thing. There's nothing wholesome. I, I, I think it, what you're saying is true, and I think it, it, it's been a problem through the ages. But I take heart. I have four children and ten grandchildren, and then I remarried after my first wife had died, and uh, I have an, an additional five. So I have oh. access to 15 grandchildren. Oh, my God. And I take, take great heart from them because... Look, their value structures are still good. It's not as though they're a lost generation in any way. No, no, no. Well, that and, all comes from home, doesn't it? And I it? think it's, it's the security of their respective home environments. Yes. And that is so vital. And the, the amount of input from the parents in raising the children, and the children well, respond accordingly. That's where it comes from. It yeah, comes yeah. from home. Yeah. And I think that that has to be our, our hope for the future, is that home values revert to, dare I say it, a little bit of a smack if you step out of line, and a little bit of a discipline. Hmm? You know, easy bit. It, it seems to be a, a taboo. Um, <laughs> uh, my youngest grandchild is eight, and my eldest grandchild is twenty. So there's quite a, a range, and I don't think any one of the parents have ever done that. And 
I think they've got other methods of being effective with their, with their Listen, with their I control. certainly don't advocate thrashing your child spare, to within spare an Spare the rod and no, spoil no, the child. Rubbish. The old Solomon the wires, I, there's not <laughs> much wisdom there. It's Do you know, interestingly enough, my father never never smacked us. I think he may have given my brother one hiding. Yeah. We may each have got one and dare I him. say it, he probably deserved it. Oh, he probably needed another 20. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But my mother was quite free with that brush of hers, you know. <laughs> Anyway, we digress. Sounds like my Welsh mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We digress. So you went to Witz and you studied history, Bachelor of Arts, majored in history. I, I did an honours degree, which I eventually finished at UNISA, because when I was at Witz, I failed the second year, and my mother said, you'd better go, <laughs> because I'm not supporting you. And I applied for a job at the SABC. And the audition was conducted by Colin Duplessis. Oh, I don't know if you remember word, him. Yes. And this was, um, it was the, the winter of 1967. And I remember going into this audition room, uh, the little studio, and having to read. Uh, I had a general knowledge test, and then I had to read a, a, a moment from the news and all the rest <laughs> of it. And, and I, I made the mistake of calling Marion Island an operatic soprano. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but they gave you the job anyway. But, but Colin, I could see, I was l looking through the, the glass and I saw this activity. And all of a sudden they started the tape recorder. And they hadn't started the tape recorder in every other instance, apparently. So you'd have one person who would come in to audition and they'd run the tape maybe on every 10th yeah. or, 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 or maybe even 50th. And I saw this and I asked him afterwards what he was doing. He said, actually, Malcolm, we think that there's a little <laughs> promise in you, but you'll have to brush up on your general knowledge. I'm afraid it's missing the boat. And, 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 and so, so it went. And I, bec I, became, a personal, I became a personal friend. of. Uh, we weren't lovers as such. I mean, we were just good friends. And uh, Colin and I remained friends till the day he died. He died on the morning of our democratic elections, oh, uh, which was April 94. I didn't know yeah, that. He, he wasn't strong enough. He was so weak in the end. Wow. Yeah, it, just such an, a nice man. And so yeah, very He eventually additive. settled at Henley on Clip. He oh, built well, this beautiful house, beautiful house, Spanish style. It was a hacienda. Yes. Yeah. Well, there were a lot of Afrikaans people yeah. who had this sort of either a castle there are lots of sort of pseudo castles, and there's also quite a lot of those hacienda with that rough style yes, plaster yes. and what have you. It was the Africana sort of architecture that the, that was their legacy to us. So there was no with, real without doubt. And and my favourite, there was a Sardinian styled house in Alberton that I used to drive <laughs> past frequently. I don't think I've and, ever been to Alberton. And, and it, it was it was a, a garish yellow, and the house was called Costa Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> you have to love these Afrikaners. I promise you, they were hilarious. Oh, wonderful. They were absolutely hilarious. So, so you got the job at the SABC doing what? And um, I was employed as uh, as an announcer, a junior announcer. This this was the the designation. The Where title. did this voice come from? Did you sort of used to sit in front of a mirror and practice? My grandmother used to oh. say to me, Malcolm, <laughs> you've got a lovely voice. You'll make a wonderful, wonderful preacher. You see. You, that's the way you must go. So I used to win these I Stedfords and things like that, reading poetry. Uh, not, not poetry as such, you know what I'm saying, uh, recitations, yes, that sort of thing. Yes, uh, And we, we had good fun doing that. Yeah. But the voice was there, I think, from, yes. the, from the word go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a gift. It's a wonderful gift. Uh, so you joined the, the SABC. I thought that you were sort of BBC trained. I had no idea until I started. I just always knew Malcolm Gooding, the voice. That's well, who you well, are. We had Tom McGee, who was the language advisor at the SABC, <laughs> and he, he was a broad Scot, <laughs> but he was very strict about the way you spoke your English. And he'd, he'd call us after the news and say, I want to speak to you about three mispronunciations. Oh and he would God. go through them. You know, It's Hayden, not Hayden, and things like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it was it was complete and utter excellence. Really, it was a very good broadcasting. The the, the English service was, I, I would say, not predominantly, but there were a lot of BBC trained people yes. there. Yes, yes. 
Cecil Jabba, I don't know if yeah. you remember the no, name I Cecil don't. Jabba, uh, Jack Dunlop. Mm. He was head of drama and then he was uh, Colin Fish. I you must have remembered Colin. Fish. Colin. Uh, Stephen O'Reilly, yeah. Mike Todd. Not Mike Todd that married uh, Elizabeth Taylor, but the, <laughs> other. <laughs> the, other <one. laughs> yeah, the other one. Unfortunately <laughs> for him, it wasn't Liz, no. <laughs> So, how long did you stay at the um, at the SABC in I, that position? I stayed. I stayed as as junior announcer from uh, October nineteen sixty seven till I left in the middle of nineteen seventy four, uh, and then they 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 changed the whole structure because they all went over to Dithering Heights in Auckland mm. in Auckland Park, if you remember. Mm, I do. Next and I left the works, SABC. Yeah. I was the first presenter producer of a program called Radio Today. I remember you must Radio, have remembered Today. Radio Today. Very well, I remember it. David Lloyd was my co- co-presenter oh. producer. Then B. Reid came in. And, oh, and B. Reid, I'd yeah, forgotten about and, her. And, and Jill Adams and people like that. It, it, oh. it was a, a cont- John Matham, much later. Yep. You know John, Yeah, I know John Matham. One, my my favourite broadcaster. One of the today, best, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then there were things like... Was it called Going Gooding? Yeah, that was a musical program. There was music program. So there was Going Gooding. There was another one, Gooding's something else. Good Vibrations. Good was Vibrations. On TV, TV, yes. And that, that was the days, of, you know, the dark days of apartheid. And uh, we, we weren't able to play international artists at mm. all. So they'd have, they'd have uh, performers from Botch, you know, from the the, the Alabama Quir. A bit everything. of a motley crew, and, yeah. And it was meant to be contemporaries. And then they, they, they hit on Hard. Johnny Mathis. For some <laughs> or other reason, he was paid by Boss or somebody like that. And and he was given a good salary. And he came to South Africa regularly. And, you know... So this, you could play Johnny Mathis. Yeah, so you, you see, he's, he's, he's one of us, you know. Yes. So we can play. You know. And they were the odd, I mean, the odd dreadful people. <laughs> Engelbert Humperdinck. Oh, yes, that's, there's another oh, one. <laughs> something <laughs> costly like they, that. They became oh. darlings of the system. Because <laughs> they but, were the only ones But the, 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 the music department at the SABC was run by a man called Anton Hartmann. And Anton Hartmann set up a censorship committee. And because I was a presenter of contemporary music, I had to attend these meetings. And Lance James, oh, I remember big Lance daddy James. country and western singer, yes. he was... In charge of the S, uh, not S, Springbok Radio Library, and all the music would come through there. But I had access to an independent source of music from the record companies: Teal, Parlophone, EMI, yes. uh, Island, you name them. Virgin when they first came really? out. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd get these these wonderful singers like David Bowie and. Uh, yeah, and you were allowed to play them. Well, I, I, I played Slip them. them in? I played them, and one day I was called into the uh, office, and it was Anton Hartmann. And you got uh, that Malcolm hiding that you never got this. as a child. And it was it was uh, Led Zeppelin's Black Dog. Oh, for goodness sake. And I mean, said, that I, was satanic. I want you to listen to these lyrics. They were satanic, they weren't they? Are, they're <laughs> harmful. They are disturbing. <laughs> they are going to take our youth Bless off, those Afrikaners. Off the they have our best the interest. You know. <laughs> Who said something about the precipice? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we had such fantastic music at that time. Oh, wonderful. I mean, we yeah. really but did. But I was given freedom to play. Okay. I, but it was all under the radar, mm. so to speak, because it was late at night, Saturday, 10 to, to midnight. Mm. Mm. I got a phenomenal following. Shoe no, we boxes, all listen. Shoe boxes full of, 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 of requests and cards. Oh, really? It was amazing. These little airmail letters. Well, we were so starved of we anything were. good, you know. We really were. If you think of it, it was... It was were you at really... Catholic boarding school? No. No, no, you were just... You know just what happened Catholic. to girls who got sent to Catholic boarding school? <laughs> <laughs> They're not good. My and you probably my... married one, which is why you've got ten the, children. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> we, we discovered the reason much later, or the reason why it happened much later. <laughs> no, I went to Park Town Girls. Did you? Hi. Oh, wonderful. Yes. And I see that's still doing brilliantly. Mm. Mm. In fact, my daughter lives just around the corner from Park Town Girls. It's, yeah, Parkview was <clears> a sort of old stamping ground. My sister and I went there. My brother went to De La Salle, which was a, oh, yes. which was a the Catholic, lemon squeezer, the yeah. lemon squeezer De La Salle. A Catholic boys' boarding school in those days. Well, no, it wasn't boarding. Was it not? It was a Catholic boys' school. No girls allowed. I don't know why my parents, they were quite sort of liberal in many ways. And that we had a bit of an a home. 
It was asexual, apolitical, mm, mm. areligious, a everything. Oh, that's good. But they insisted on this separate development within the schools. But looking back, I do. I'm an advocate of that mm -hmm. or for that. I think that I think that the poor children that go to mixed schools now spend their entire morning trying to do their nails and their hair and their eyes and their this way. We didn't worry because we didn't have any boys okay, looking at yeah, us. Okay, okay. So you think that that? I think it's good. That, that yeah. is. That manifests. Yeah, I think when there's time for all of that co later. So yeah, to speak. that yeah. co-ed. Yeah. Listen, like everything, there's pros and cons. So we were going gooding, we were doing all our stuff, and then you got married. Where did you meet your first wife? I met her, her when I was at university at Wits, and her her brother became my best friend, and her name was Megan, not Megan. Okay. And she was. Irish Catholic, you know, that's, uh, that's sort of... Uh, and you'd moved away from Ferenachan by then, I'm assuming. That was Germiston. I mean, you... you so you went no, up, That's a pretty you fancy... <laughs> so you, if, if you don't see it in Ferenachan, you see it in Germiston. Wow, Germiston. You I haven't got there. You haven't arrived. I didn't know anyone lived in Germiston, Malcolm. I thought it was for factories yeah. and aeroplane hangars uh, well, exa exactly and that, that sort of thing. Yeah. No? Everything revolved around the Rand Airport. Yeah. Rand Literally, Airport. even the school I went to was across the road oh, from the really? Rand, Germiston Boys High, and I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. The schools were it was, good. Quality. It was a happy place. Yeah, and we had some rough oaks, and but we also had. You just mucked in. We yeah, we yeah. didn't have a choice. We just had to. I mean, dare you be offended? God, can you imagine how long it would have taken one of those big boys to smack you into shape? Well, this is the whole thing. If and you were offended, and if you went home and told your mother, you would have been smacked again the next day for being a ninny. And you or know, a sissy. You, you, you realize you knew so you how to handle them. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you check me out, I'll kick you cripple, you know, and that sort of thing. Those Germiston expressions that roll off the tongue. Oh, I'll kick you fat, did you? <laughs> and, and other delightful uh, expletive deletive. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you bring back such memories there. <laughs> so you did all of that, and in the meantime... How did you make enough money to support four children? That's what I'm asking. You know, I think that's, again, part of the, the blessed uh, aspect of having this talent, of having a good voice. <clears throat> From the word go, I left the SABC. I remember Kathleen David saying to me, Malcolm, you're going to regret leaving the SABC <laughs> because you will not find a better opportunity. And in a few years' time, you can be head of English <laughs> service. And I said to her, Kathleen, That's I, why I'm I leaving. Have to, I have to take the break. <laughs> I have to take the break. And there was a man called Dave Gooden who ran a studio complex called Sonovision. I remember Sonovision. And they did squad cars. And Dave said, I will guarantee you a squad cars every week. So every Friday in the morning, we'd record for the following Friday. Who uh, wrote Squad Cars? A different writers. T Anthony Fridjohn, you, you know? I uh, know Anthony. Yes. The brother of Michael. Yes. yes. And uh, 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 um, Rod Hudson. There, there were about three. Oh, Trish Brandt. It uh, was uh, brilliant. Uh, but, but Anthony did the lion's fixed. share. And when he got to the end, when we... we, we I was I did squad cars from 1968 till 1984 when Springbok. Did it go for that long? Yes, yes, from the word go. Adrian Steed was the first presenter and narrator Adrian. of squad cars, and then he had a fallout with with uh, Dave Gooden at Sonovision, and Dave executed a little bit of his power, and and took Adrian off the scene, and then I filled the gap then. Okay. And I became the Dunhill voice because Dennis Smith passed some negative comment. He'd been the Dunhill voice before yes. about what a terrible habit smoking is. <laughs> <laughs> After hearing his commercial on the air one day. <laughs> so you don't endear yourself to the Ruperts that way. No, <laughs> and nothing's changed. And, and I, was, I was called in by Des Stradom, who was their chief copywriter. I got the surprise phone call. Would, would I come in and audition for Dunhill? And that was in 1974. Yeah. And those things also, you had lots of bits that you used to do. Visit the of showrooms of Alfred Dunhill, 30 <laughs> Duke Street, St. James's, London, where through the ages, craftsmen and blenders have brought the gentle art of smoking to perfection. The gentle I mean, art of can smoking. You, can, I you mean, imagine, can you imagine? There can is you, no art or craft no. to smoking. And I, I became their international voice. I, <laughs> I, I did these commercials. They paid me handsomely. 
Good. And I was able to support uh, there you are. a Catholic wife and, uh, and, and 200 and, and, children and, yeah. and private schools <laughs> and all the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were living in Germiston, you know. Had you been living in Parkview yeah, with, but the, by with then, the Adams family? Then we moved to Parkview. Oh, did you? Yes, to 89 Westcliff Drive. Okay, well, that Cor was quite corner smart. Corner of, of, of Wicklow, yes. uh, uh, West, Westford and, 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 and Westford. Wexford, yeah. Yeah, Wexford, yeah, Wexford. yeah. And we were there, and uh, that's where I, we had all our kids. <laughs> Malcolm, you wrote a book. Yes, I've got it here. Confessions of a Voice yes. Artist. Can I hold it up? Yes, so when did you publish this? Uh, about two years ago. Uh, Has it uh, done well? You know, we, we, we only printed a, a small number, and we... I think I've got a three or four left, uh, and that's it. Not three or four hundred, just yes. three or four, and that's it. Well, so it's going to become a threatened species. I, <laughs> I was quite shocked to hear that the only book that I've ever really taken too much interest in or had any th knowledge of numbers and things was the Plata Wine Guide, yes. which I found for many years was in the top bestseller. I think it was yeah. number one or number <laughs> two on the bestsellers in South Africa. You only have to sell something like 2,000 copies to be in the Isn't bestseller list. I mean, it's quite bizarre. Yeah, yeah. But the book is about confessions. What did you have to confess about? Well, uh, you know, we, we do have a family background. And unlike a, a lot of the people in my industry, I do talk the truth about... Who you the, are. And, and people that I've encountered. And, oh, there are there, there many instances... I. Uh, I was I was employed by Arms Corps as their reader of uh, of um, board papers. I, I, I had to sign documents to the fact the effect that this was classified information, mm. and it was all about the the cannons that the South African arms industry made. You know the G six and the G five. They were amazing what they made. Bombs. If you think of it, amazing. Yes, and uh, one day. I, I, so I, I used to do all these specs, read them, meant absolutely nothing to me. Yeah. It was, just, it was so, such high-tech talk. And then they would take these cannons and sell them to the Arabs in, in Saudi Arabia and, and of course wh wherever. They, yeah. they were terribly uh, clever. And, and, and one day I, I got, this guy arrives at my house. <laughs> and this is after I've been working at Arms Corps for at least a year. He says, I've got to do a full inspection of your bank account. <laughs> and he's gray suit, or a shock, gray suit or a... shiny. Was he with... from SARS? No, he was from the Bureau of State Security. Oh, my God. And he did, he done an investigation into me. <laughs> and, uh, and he says, I see, I see your, your son, he matriculated uh, last year. Uh, and uh, I see he's going to Rhodes University. So I said, yes. He says, hey, how old is he? I said, he's 18. He said, uh, what are his political affiliations? <laughs> so I said to him, I, I, don't I don't really he, know. I think he's essentially apolitical. Yes, right? he was we all you, were. You were raised. We in, all were. He says, um, I just want to make a, a little, uh, put an idea in your, in your head. He said, how do you feel if Timothy or Timothy can, Timothy. Go, to, <laughs> can, can go to Rhodes University for four years? He can have all his tuition paid for. What? And he can have a motor car and pocket money. Just <laughs> if he can be one of our men on the ground. At, oh, really? At Rhodes. At Rhodes. I, I said to him, let's say his name was Bertus or Gerardus. <laughs> I said, very nice of you to visit me. You've seen my bank statements. You know her. And thank you for the offer. Thank you very much. And I walked out. I said, but not today. And I walked, walked him out of the house. I don't know what to Just know. Well, that's how they infiltrated yeah. Yeah. everything. You see, yeah. they were incredibly clever. Mm -hmm. I, you have to give it to them. Agree with them or not, they were unbelievably clever the way they put everything together. And they controlled this place. It's terrifying, really. But at least the lights were on. Hmm? Mm. Yeah. You know, we had water. I, 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 I think I'd rather live with no lights. in an environment where I depend on my solar panels and Eskim coming to the party occasionally, <laughs> but knowing that we've got freedom of expression. Or do we? Uh, well, I, don't I, know I like so to much. believe we do. I, I, I'm, You're such an optimist, uh, Malcolm. Yeah, yeah, well, I, There's no more freedom I, left, my, not my, only here. My passion is history. Yes. And I think it's inevitable that, that we're going to have what we, what, what we are having now. So interesting you say that, because I'm, I'm terrible. You know, I cause terrible eruptions in, at dinner parties in my own home 
which is my space to be free. We all can be yeah. free in our own homes. And my friends love to come. And I set cats amongst pigeons and pigeons amongst cats. And we have wonderful raucous yeah. debate in wonderful. my home, which healthy. is what we grew up with. It's mm. healthy. And everybody, we all agree before everybody goes home to disagree. And on we go. And that's how we do it. Because if you don't debate like that, which we were taught to do as youngsters, you don't grow. You don't get any. No. You don't get anything <laughs> extra into your headspace. So, I was. I set this particular cat amongst the pigeons the other evening about freedom of speech. Um, I think a journalist recently wrote something for the Daily Maverick, mm -hmm. ripping into the Cape Town waterfront, saying that it was elitist and it was only for people with lots of money and, you know, they should stop doing it because they're charging too high like, rental. But, and I said, that's absolute nonsense. Oh, and then he was made to apologize. Mm -hmm. I think he was made to apologize, something like but that. Who would he have apologized to? I don't know. Yeah, the, yeah. the readers wrote in and said, it's appalling that this man should be allowed. You know what the Cape Tonians are like if yeah, you, yeah. you criticize something. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. So they all said, nonsense, you know, this is what the waterfront is supplying, thousands of jobs. And there was, there was what I thought was quite healthy debate. And then somebody suggested that this journalist be forced to apologize for what he'd said. And all the cancel cultures and yeah. all the history, <coughs> you know, naysayers and all the whatever said, yeah, get rid of this person. He shouldn't be allowed to write it. I am of the opinion that we should all be allowed to write course, whatever we want course. to write, and we should all be allowed to say it. It's not disparaging of a person. Exactly. As long as it's not defamation. And his observations are probably quite true. So, probably is elitist. It is elitist, but and what it, do they think? We're living in the dark ages. But the fact that, that he's got that as a, an opinion and saying it's a privileged class and not everybody can enjoy it, that's his opinion. And but he's got the platform to express exactly. it. Exactly. And we, the, as soon as we start negating all those platforms and saying you can't, you can't have a head boy because that singles him out, yeah. first of all, it assumes that he's a boy. Secondly, mm -hmm. it singles him out among 600 sexist, yeah. other people. <laughs> Thirdly, I honestly don't believe that the world is, is doing itself any favors at the moment with all of this cancelling and all this nonsense that's going on. And I suppose we'll be it, shot down in it, flames, it, but it, it might, really is bollocks. It might bollocks. just be part of our evolution. How, how is it going to involve it, us it, in a better way? No, but it's, we, we, not everything is a positive evolution. Mm. We learn from our mistakes as well. Mm. I really do believe it's all I working think, towards the Malcolm Gladwell, perfect person, wise yeah. person. <clears throat> think we're going to get. How long is it going to take us to get there? I don't. Do you think? I don't think. I. Th I think it's it's more an I an idol or an ideal mm. than a reality. Mm. So it'll be generations, and we will continue fighting within ourselves. Yes, and I think that, that we need to be able to allow everybody to continue to not fight but debate all of this stuff. And at the moment, oh. I feel like you're no longer allowed to debate lest you upset somebody. You must have a shoebox. You must always have a shoebox. What does it's, that mean? It's your right. Your, you can go to Speaker's Corner. Oh, that you can stand on your box? Yeah, yeah and you can stand on We used on to call it a soapbox. Oh, soapbox, not shoebox. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> what does that mean? No yeah. wonder. No, no wonder. One, I think we've got to yeah. cancel yeah. you. You're it, too old. It's very slightly uh, horizontal, horizontally challenged <laughs> person really would stand on me. a shoebox instead of a, a, a soap mm. or the other way other around. Way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I can't think, get myself I out think of that, that No, you're never going to dig no, your way no, out of no, that hole. No, no. That was a big blunder. No, yeah. Okay, well, forgive you. Maybe Brennan will be nice and edit it out <laughs> no, if you no, pay no, him. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's Everyone all part of price. evolution and I think that lest we get ahead of ourselves and think for one minute that as the human race we're in control of this planet, lest we make a mistake and stumble and fall. Let's just remember that those dinosaurs were a lot bigger than us. Oh, and yeah. the world took them out one time. Yeah, 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 when it yeah. had had enough, it thought the universe thought, up with this, we cannot put. And off they went. Yeah, we are very inconsequential. So we yeah. really are just a little speck. So yeah. I think all, all this foot stamping and carrying on about what we may and may not do and telling each other what to, I think we need a reset, don't you think? Uh, no, I, I, 
I'm very pessimistic, uh, optimistic about. Uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm optimistic about change. Our, 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 about change, about evolution, about improvement. I believe everything has has a purpose. Mm. Uh, I, 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 I'm a, a great critic of the Russians' invasion of Ukraine. I feel very strongly about this, and I do feel that the Russians will be punished for this. Do you? I really. I do. think it's time for a third world war. No, I don't agree with you at all. I, th I think they they are too devastating. The consequences so? are too devastating. Do we get to believe everything that comes from the massive media machine that that churns these terrible stories about one side well, and no terrible stories about yeah, another I, side? I, I, my my Do you son think that's Timothy, who, who who lives in the states now, he says it's a farce, and he he, he detests American politics. He mm, absolutely me too. It's detests completely it. disgraceful. And, and he he says it's it's all about opportunity. Yeah, it's disgraceful. It's all about money. And, yeah, I I believe that. There is a decided uh, or a decision by Putin that there, there, there should be a, a genocide on the Ukrainian people, and he does believe that it's his destiny to colonize. I don't think it's colonize. the Ukrainian people necessarily. I think he needs. The, I think he feels there needs to be, um, in his mind, Putin's justice. Um, he, he'll tell you anyway, this is a subject of another discussion, mm, which mm, is not going to be our yeah, podcast. Maybe we should do a Russian-Ukrainian <laughs> podcast. Can you imagine? We'll be out of so I was a communist opinions. at university. Welcome so, to the club. <laughs> so I love Putin. <laughs> but, um, so you were, you were parading in Jansmats Avenue. For sure. And the police charged. For sure. <clears throat> yeah. My sister was being locked up in black sash trucks. Oh, and wonderful. You know, we all wonderful, had wonderful, wonderful How fun. How enriched we are by Absolutely. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at it that way. <laughs> so we've gone past all of you. You've lived through all of this. And you've written your book, which I think anybody with any sense will go and get a copy. Is it available online? How do you buy it? Uh, it, it? It was available at um, exclusives and a few bookshops. Uh, and basically, as I said... It's, Are you going to do another <coughs> print run? I should. I absolutely uh, think After you discussions should. like this... I yeah, think we should. Pay for a way. Yeah, yeah. I think it's fabulous that those kind of things are available because that is the, is the sort of underlying um, integrity that the press... And the media used to be lined with. Mm. And I think it's missing a little bit at the moment. I don't think there's brilliant journalism that's going on at the moment. You have some people who shine like unbelievable stars in the sky in the journalistic world. Mm. And then you get others who don't research their subject. They are clearly yeah. bribed. They're clearly on the wrong side because of money or whatever the case may be. You just... I think we're sitting in a space on planet Earth where, where we do don't you know get who your to information believe. From? Where do you get mostly? I talk to people. D but do you, do, you, do you go on online newspapers or do you buy newspapers? I don't think I've bought a newspaper other than to wash the windows with for a yeah. very long time. Yeah, yeah. I go online. And I hear. Yeah, our subscription to Business Day ended about two years ago. And I... Since then, it's, it's, it, it's... But what news thing do you listen to now? I think Al Jazeera is quite good. Uh, the SABC, I uh, honestly no, can't no. listen to that. It's not news. No, no. It's a load no, of no, bollocks no, no. about, it's, you know, somebody's got parochial. a python in their garden. It's too and parochial. It's no, nobody's interested <clears> in it. In SABC news, it's rubbish. It's a tabloid back page. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's basically. just rubbish. Yeah. What news do you listen to? The BBC is so woke. Sky News, you can't... CNN, oh my God, you can't even think about CNN. I, I, I don't, obviously people are watching it because they're, they're hordes and hordes what of else commercials. Do you watch? They're hordes and hordes of commercials. Yeah. And, you know, you'll have a story that'll say be six minutes, and then you'll have three minutes of commercials, and then another story. And commercials, I know. So it drives the bus. You have to pay the rent, and et cetera, mm. et cetera. But they are irritating. I, I, I use YouTube a lot. I use YouTube is a fantastic thing. Mm. In fact, this is going on YouTube. My little Brennan sitting over there makes it all happen. <laughs> I've got these little Gen Z and millennial <laughs> fairies that make all of this stuff happen, yeah. and it's brilliant. Uh, it, it's, uh, and YouTube you've, you've is got, fabulous. You've got choice. Yeah. And if you want an in-depth discussion, except you they can take find stuff it. off. There's censorship on YouTube. Yes, I, I think there is a fair amount, but you must get there and hope to get the story before it's taken away. <laughs> 
we used to that from how we grew up. I think I spent up. a lot of time watching YouTube or following YouTube. I spent a, probably too much time. I do too. But it is the most, um, I think, reliable source of what's going on in the world because it, it posts or publishes everybody's viewpoint. And, and, and extension to YouTube yeah. would be podcasts. And I listen to a tremendous amount of podcasts. Are you going to be doing podcasts with Solid Gold? Hopefully. Are we, you? We, we, we've got some ideas. I think you should. Uh, my wife Salome is a book reviewer and she's written probably 30 or 40 reviews in the last few years. And I've now put them into a, an audio portfolio mm. so one can listen to them. And they will be available pretty soon as, okay. as podcast, and and so it goes. But but I I I get a lot of information from podcasts. Yeah, I, love I think podcasts. podcasts are great. And the the other great thing about them is that you can listen to them whenever you want to. Very convenient. You don't have to be around that radio at half past seven on a Friday night. Do you listen to or audio books? You know, I don't listen to audio books anymore. But I was about to get onto the story of you and audio books, because you've done. Hundreds and hundreds in the, of those, In the last you? two years, I've, I've read uh, eight, eight mm. audio books. Mm. And the most recent was the, the Quran in English. Really? Yeah. That yeah. must have been fascinating. Uh, fascinating. Who translated it? Uh, a, a, a group of translators uh, from uh, um, the Muslim community in Cape Town, in Turkey, and in America. They'd, it's an amazing... It's fascinating. An amazing it took me 11 months to read. Wow. No, I'm not saying I read. <laughs> For me, <laughs> the Quran a is a bird. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And if we I, like I must to say, stay I've, I've, come away, I've come away with, with a new angle. Have you? Because I wouldn't have read the Quran spontaneously as a silent read. But because I read it as an audiobook exercise, you have Can to concentrate you read on it? what you're saying. Or is it like reading the Bible? I mean, that's no, it's, incomprehensible it's, it's much, it's for me. It's much like reading the Bible. It's much the same. You can't understand that In fact, that English. there's so much common ground is there? between the, the Quran and the Old Testament. And, you know, I, I, I'm essentially not a spiritual person in, in that I follow a religion. I'm essentially a religious. Mm. Uh, but I, I love to get comparative discussions on religion. But, you know, I think... As you get older, you realize that there's sort of 10 things that we all have to do. And whether they're documented in the Bible or the Quran or the, um, the Jewish Bible, what's it called? The um, Torah. The Torah. Mm -hmm. They're all the same 10 things. Yeah. <laughs> don't sleep with your next they're door neighbor's wife. Yeah. Don't yeah. tell fibs. You know, yeah. Don't, yeah. Yeah. they're all the same. Yeah. They yeah. really are. And it's just told in a different, in a different manner. If, 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 if I had to ask you what your, what your driving ambition is in life, what do you want to do? What, what, how will you answer that? What do I want to do yeah. or who do what, I what, want to be? What do you want to have as your legacy? Oh, as my legacy. I had an English granny who always said, you know, your greatness will be determined by the amount of people at your funeral. But then she didn't know about things like COVID. Mm -hmm. where you died all on your ace and nobody went to your funeral. I think it's just ghastly. So we've also got quite a lot of Irish in our background. And I think my legacy, I hope that when I die, they can put me out with the rubbish. I don't need a, I mean, it comes on a Monday. There are plenty of black bags in the cupboard under the sink in the kitchen. They can put me in a black bag and send me out with the rubbish if Pick It Up arrives that day. But... What I would like to do is to have my friends and family arrive and drink the entire contents of my cellar and my booze cupboard or whatever and remember me as having been incredibly additive in all their mm -hmm. lives in some form or another. Mm -hmm. I want to be remembered with love. I think that's wonderful. That's, that's what my legacy should so, be. So I'm becoming the interviewer. So, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> yeah, what's yours going to be? So, so I, th I think uh, t two things. Life is fun. Yeah. And, and, and I really do live by that. Mm. It's, it's, it's a lovely ride. But, but I think what I try to inculcate in as many people that I come across, that let's always work towards or in the pursuit of truth. You know, what did, what did Mark Twain say? A lie can get around the world and back before I've had a chance to put on my shoes. <laughs> and it's and so, that was then. Yeah, it's so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, 
more than 100 years ago. And it, it, it's so easy to concoct a story and lie. And tr try and look, try not embellish, try and move closer to the truth in your storytelling. Embellish, and in your life. Embellishment is Don't quite lie. interesting. Lying is horrible, but okay. embellishment makes oh, it fun. But that adds, think, that's literature. That's literature, yeah. that's imagination. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yes, I think, I think integrity and truth are quite, mm. quite important. Integrity is the word. Yeah. They're quite important. Yeah. We wrote the book, and actually the main reason, guys, why Malcolm's in my studio today is that I was here at Solid Gold's offices the other day. I walked in, and Gavin called me, and he said, Come and say hello. And there was Malcolm Gooding. Hadn't seen you for very, very ever and ever and ever in a day. And we agreed that we were going to catch up and chat, which is exactly what we're doing. But one of the main reasons is this here in front of us. Because Malcolm's not only gorgeous, he's not only talented, <laughs> he's not only clever, he doesn't only speak beautifully, but he also bought a farm in the Cape that now produces olives and olive oil product and is also a guest house. You Tell know, it's, everybody. It's an amazing story. Uh, I went, 1995, went down to cover the World Cup. Uh, I went to Newlands and uh, after the opening ceremony. Oh, you did that trophy thing, didn't yeah. you, with Mr. Mandela? And, and I'll, I'll t tell you about it tell if us. you have time. And then I went looking for a farm. and. There was so little confidence in the South African economy. And I picked up 37 hectares of land in the Robertson area. Which is gorgeous. With unlimited water, unlimited water on a scheme, virtually a scheme, a house ready built. And the guy that I bought it from said, uh, actually, I don't want the money. Mm -hmm. I said, I, I, it's about uh, 250,000 rand. But he said, <laughs> what I, I work for, um, he worked for Cape, Cape uh, Nature. At, uh, at, oh, uh, no, did he ask you to said, donate it to no, the he said, he said, I need an ocean-going motorboat with two engines, a trailer for the motorboat, and a bucky to pull the train. Oh, bless his heart. So we did an, 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 a calculation, <laughs> and it came to... Is that what you paid for your farm? 250000 Oh, my gosh, I, I love that. I went to a lawyer in Friedendahl, a chap called Kurs Kutsia. Of course his name was Kurs. Of course, of course. And Kurs drew up a contract, and I bought that farm, and they gave for it a, a value of 250000 rand. And it is... In heaven, it's beautiful. It's just oh, the most Robertson wonderful place. Robertson is lovely. I yeah, mean, speak yeah. to Donny Devet. But there was exactly <laughs> there was so little faith in the in in the economy. Well, there's no faith now. But you're not going to buy a farm for a bucky and a truck and no, a trailer. No, you will not. You will not. <laughs> the, the trends have changed. You can buy you can buy plots of land in Gauteng now for knockdown prices. But then try and buy in uh, the Cape, the Western Cape. Why do you uh, think that is? Because it's of a bit of a hot question. Semi, semi, <laughs> semigration. You semi, don't have to answer. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it was just good, good fortune. That's all. That's amazing. Yeah, so yeah. did you add to the farm? Well, you must have, because you've yeah, got I'm, two oh, guest no, houses no. on there. We planted three thousand olive trees. Uh, this is over a period of nearly thirty years. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah. So it, we've done a lot. And we produce olive oil. It, it, we just cover the costs, but we have a, a very Where nice... Where do we buy this olive oil? Uh, you, you, can, you can buy it individually. If you, if you visit me on Facebook and say you want some of my olive oil. I think we must and, maybe pop it into the solid gold shop. Okay, we can do that. Maybe we'll do that. And I'll give you the price list and all yes. of this. Yes. Oh, that'll be wonderful. And people yeah, can yeah, buy yeah, it yeah, direct yeah. through the shop. Yeah, yeah. And if they'd like to... If they'd like to check-ins, because you rent those two guest houses. Are there only the two guest houses? We've got, we've got the main guest house, and then we've got two. We've restored the uh, two historical buildings we've restored on this farm. One's called the Hot Beers AC. It's delightful. Have you got any Hot Beers <laughs> there? <laughs> <laughs> and the other is the Castile Key. It's a little castle. It's beautiful. The Afrikaners love an E-E-E oh, on yeah. the end. It was hot not a Hot Beers AC. AC. Hot Bessie Hazy. <laughs> and Wurf Hazy. Yeah. You've got to love Wurf them. Wurf Macy. You've yeah, got yeah. to love those Afrikaners. I do love them, I'm, I have I'm to say. I'm married to an Afrikaner. Are you? Yes, yes. Is she Salome? She's Salome, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. And okay. She, she writes book reviews in English. It's, it's fantastic. 
that she's a community. No, I think that it's time that we all stopped fighting with each other and we all recognized each other for the little individual bits that everybody, each little fraternity has done to make South Africa what it is, yeah. regardless of whether it was good, bad or indifferent. The reality is we're all here. Well, so that's it. We can't Desmond Tutu referred to it as a rainbow nation and the tapestry and all. But we do have a blessed tapestry. You've mm. just got to have a positive outlook about it. Everyone this place, has yeah. a tapestry, yeah, but yeah. at the moment, we're focusing on the knots at the back of the tapestry rather than the picture on the front <laughs> yeah, of the tapestry. So we better analysis. leave those knots alone. Yes. And I think just try to love each other all a little bit more. Really, no, really. I like those sentiments. Malcolm, what is the name of Hasey online? Uh, Gooding's Country House. Gooding's Country House. Bonnyvale. Okay, so, so it's registered we, Bonnyvale. We, we've... We, in Robertson, but Goody, Gooding's Country House, Bonnie. Good enough. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And people can pop down and there's picnics at the river. I oh, saw. Yeah. It looks absolutely, guys, yeah. it looks absolutely beautiful. And we, we, just around the corner from us, we have a wedding venue. And when I say around the corner, about four k's away. We're not going to encourage be, marriage. We're not encouraging there. any further breeding. They, we don't want <laughs> That you can, no, you, you, you can hope for, but you'll never control it. <laughs> <coughs> Breeding will happen. Breeding will happen. <laughs> yes. Now you can't concentrate, I can see. <laughs> so, little venue for make, getting married around the corner. Stay at Ons Hasey. Yeah, stay at the Hartbeer's Hasey and the Castile Key. And at, at Gooding's And I'm House. sure around you there are other people who also have accommodation. There, there are very few. There are very few, apart from the, the, the venue itself. Uh, the, 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 um, I'm trying to think of the name now. Attila. Attila. The right, Hun. Attila the Hun. The yeah, Hun, yeah, yes. Yeah. And it's, it's a rampant horse at the, at the, at the entrance. Oh, no word. It's a wonderful okay. venue. It's okay. set in the hills, away from everything. And these people, I think it's safe after after a protracted wedding cer uh, yes. A celebration. Yes, they, we better not advertise they, it too much that the cops are on the road. They, they drive. It's all dirt road. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think, you know, ages go by uh, before people drive past. You know. <laughs> it's, it's that sort of feel. It's very, it has a great feel of isolation. And you're living there permanently? Uh, we spend about, I'd say, w one month there and two months in Joburg. So okay. that's the ratio, yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, every it's, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's been absolutely amazing chatting to you. You haven't changed a minute. You're still gorgeous. Uh, you still speak you. beautifully. Uh, we can't wait for your podcast. And, and Carrie, you're an absolute delight. <laughs> Sorry I misspelt your name. I called you Carrie. Carrie, yeah, yeah, I, know. Yeah. I know. I've got some darling friends whose surname is Carrie. So um, I don't mind being called Carrie. It's okay, fine. Okay, okay. Malcolm, good luck for everything. Let us know when your podcast and things will pop all of this up. My little Brennan or Callum or Shannon or somebody will make it happen. Everybody can see where Gooding's goodies are. I, and so, I so enjoyed this chat. No, and we'll Very catch special. up again soon. Thank you so much. Another production from Solid Gold Podcasts.